Right, the lads in good spirits and looking forward to a big game at the CBS. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think they were in good spirits really after the uh, after the game on Saturday. I thought we played pretty well, as I said. And then reflecting on it, uh, I feel exactly the same way. Um, we performed we, f we performed pretty well and created a load of chances, which is what we uh, which is what we aim to do. Um, and really, it was just taking those chances on the day would have yeah it would have killed the game and given us that. That three points and uh, and, a, and a really good platform going into to, uh, into tomorrow night's game. But um, I think whatever happened on Saturday, it doesn't sort of prepare you necessarily for a game against a Tottenham side who have got the most aggressive press in Europe at the moment with with top players throughout the side. And you know we've got a game Saturday. They've got a game Saturday. It, it, it's just a nightmare trying to get to uh, a side that can. Uh, that can compete with a really, really top team, to be fair, um, with an eye to the next game coming really quickly after it. So I'm sure they've got similar similar issues, but they'll be pretty different, I think. Um, but similar thoughts. And uh, we've all got to wait and see. We've got to wait and see what they do. But, you know, for us, we've got to try and find and navigate our way through a... Um, through, a, through a, an interesting sort of few days because, you know, we want the three points on Saturday, there's no doubt about it, but we've got a really, really tough game tomorrow evening and we don't want to just turn up and be passengers. We've got to try and compete and give them a give them a game. And we know that Premier League athletes are, um, are different animals. Um, but we've done OK against some of those teams before. So there's always a chance... Um, but again, it's the same old cliche, really. You've got to be at your best and they've got to have an off night. Um, but that's not to say we won't be having a, a, a real go because the, you know, the chance of getting through is, uh, is mouth-watering. I think that the crowd will be around about 25,000 tomorrow as well. So uh, they bring in a few. They've sold their allocation out, as you'd expect, from mm -hmm. Premier League team as, as big as Tottenham. But... You know, it's a it's a mouth watering game, I think. And is it difficult to prepare against a side like that? Because you know, they've got such a big squad of really talented players, haven't they, throughout? And it's difficult to second guess what Andrew's going to do. And he sort of made bold claims this week that he's going to win silverware in his second year and all that. So we suggest he's going to take the competition seriously. So. It must be difficult from your point of view. Well, it's difficult regardless of what decisions the, the opposition manager makes, but um, you would expect um, you would expect them to be strong, whatever. Um, the, 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 there's, a, there's a number of challenges in every game that you face, but you know when you're facing a game like this against a side that have got top players through every every position and the way that they play, the way that they set about the job, we have to be um, we have to be real, realistic with it. We've got to make sure that we're in the game and and we can try and compete and, and cause them some problems when we can as well. But you know me, you don't want to sit there and not take part in a game. You want to try and take part in the game. So that's you know the other part of it. You know you want you want to have players in positions to be able to go and affect their back line at times and um, but not only that be able to defend and and stop their significant threats so it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting time really when you're coming up to a game playing a game like this um, but it, it, it's also fantastic and take that you know sort of the uh, um, the tactical you know logistical sort of because there's logistical challenges as well you know players playing players over playing players not playing too even at this stage of the season because we've got players with certain conditions they are in certain conditions where we have to be mindful of uh, of them as well and then obviously the game and the quick turnaround on Saturday is, is, is significant in my my thoughts as well so whilst tomorrow is again a really important game for us so Getting that balance right is going to be uh, uh, certainly a challenge, but um, I was going to say that that balance because you know you've got also because of who it is you're going to have players desperate to play, aren't you? Yeah. And you, I suppose you've got to 
strong that balance as well. A hundred percent, yeah. But then, obviously, meetings that we have with uh, with medical department, with the uh, uh, sports science department, you've got to try and make sure that we have players in the right places physically and mentally for for all the challenges that we have and then sometimes there's conversations to be had with individuals after those meetings to um, to explain to them or to ask them about things I mean it's really difficult to ask a player you know how are you feeling yeah I'm fine no problem you know you have to sometimes take that out of their mm-hmm. hands based on what you know what what the uh, uh, what the past history is, what, what they've done, players loading and things like that. There's there's a lot of things that you've got to take into consideration. And like I said the other day, you want more certainty and you know to be able to make that decision properly with clarity. And, and sometimes there's a grey areas. Or a lot of the time there's grey areas because we haven't got the you you sort of guessing and, and hoping that we're making the right right decision. Certainly for them, you're making the right decision for the for the individual. You know, we talk about the games and the games program now. We've been listening to that on the way in when you know talking about this uh, the extended Champions League and then the Club World Cup next year when that comes in and the amount of games that people are playing now. The players, the top players, are starting to have a voice and and uh, voice their concerns as well. You know, in in a forty six game league season as well, you know it's 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 tough. It really is tough, and you can understand from their perspectives. Um, you know, they're not daft either. They understand that the, you know, the games are there. There's people are desperate to see them play, but what then? And obviously, the revenue that's involved. You've got to make sure that players are looked after and they're they're able to fulfil the commitments in a, in a way that you'd want to. And the paying public are getting getting to see them at the best. It it, it just starts to eat away at the edges. But um, yeah, that's a that's also an issue for clubs lower down. Uh, the, the the pyramid as I'm trying to explain but from our point of view we've got some players there that that, um, that are desperate to play players that have been in the team players that are in the team but also players that have been on the periphery they're all desperate to play in games like this it's on live TV and there's a big crowd going to be there and the, you know the occasion is something that you don't get to experience that often so um that's my sort of next few hours, I suppose, just making sure that we've got a coherent plan and um, we've got the uh, a, a team in place that can come and play and, and give a really good account of, uh, of ourselves and, uh, and do Coventry City proud as they've done in the past. I guess one of the most desperate players to play would be Ben Sheehan, given he's an ex-Arsenal boy. How's he doing? Yeah, um, well, Ben and... Tatsu, uh, they've been training, so you know. Again, they'll train today, and we'll see. I'll see how they are. Um, but it's just nice to have them back on the grass, you know. And every day that goes by, they're getting closer and closer. So that's that's a, a real positive for us. And is Josh okay? He had a shoulder problem, didn't he? Uh, he came in uh, on Monday, and, and he had um, or yesterday, and he had. Uh, uh, some attention paid to his shoulder, but he's, I think, really just to look over it. Um, he did some rehabilitation work and uh, didn't go on the grass, but he was, um, yeah, he, he was in a, a better place than I think we may have feared initially. Mm-hmm. I, I know you're going to this game you know, as underdogs, but is there a little bit of expectation, perhaps from the national media, from the TV people, I don't know, on Coventry, given what you achieved last year, you know, beating Wolves and then by rights virtually beating Man United, really. I, I, th- I think that uh, I think that um, the, the, there's interest in clubs from uh, lower divisions playing against the top teams anyway, especially with our recent history. As you, just, you rightly say, we, mm. we you know we had a, a brilliant FA Cup run, and this is the first time we've been beyond the first round in in. 12 years or so so you know we know how difficult it is this and, and historically been tough for us to get through whereas we've always used this or tended to use this with people that have been have needed the next game to keep themselves or keep everybody as level as we can in, in the, with their um, with the game time and load so um, sometimes that pays off sometimes it doesn't this season it's been good because we know we've got a a really 
good uh, depth to the squad in most areas. So um, we've managed to get through, played some really decent stuff actually in this competition so far. So we're uh, yeah happy to be in this position and and uh, and going up a really good team against a really good team. They're they're a, they're a top team, top team. Is it nice to see James Madison if he if he comes back? I mean, he's, he's still a bit of a shining light, really, for the academy, isn't he? And the academy success, one of many. I mean, I know Josh is, you know, um, leading the way at the minute. You know, it's the latest one to come through, but and you've got others underneath. But there's been some brilliant players come through, and 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 James Madison's one right up there with one of the best, if not the best. But you know where he is with his career, and um, you know his personality is infectious. He's uh, he loves playing football, you know. He, he he's he's sort of a, a similar ilk to Callum O'Hare with his, you know, with his character and effervescence. But he, he you know, he's a top player. You know, he, he finds space brilliantly. He's got he's a great technician. He can score goals. You know, he's he's obviously made uh, uh, a lot of appearances for England now, and hopefully. He can make more in the uh, in the future, but he, he he's a top player. There's no doubt about it. And when he was coming through here, I always thought that he was. Uh, and, and this is after when I I'd been here. Um, I think firstly with uh, um, Stephen Presley, and then latterly certainly with Tony Mowbray when he came to the four uh, with a good squad that they had in League One at that point. And and again, you know, difficult to keep hold of players like that. For any length of time, and uh, everybody recognises the quality that he's got. And whether he starts tomorrow night, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But um, you know, certainly the type of players that uh, that, that Tottenham have got, um, they are good all over the pitch. You know, regardless of who they play and um, and how they set up. But we one thing we do know is that they'll be going and and being aggressive and trying to press, and we have to be ready for that. James is a local lad and he's still got a lot of affection for his hometown club and he still supports him. Do you like to think it'd be a nice reception for him if he does feature at any point? Um, well, yeah, I think he will. You know, I think he will. I think the supporters recognise that, but that's um, um, that, that'll be the furthest thing from my thoughts, I think, going into tomorrow's game. I hope he gets a lovely reception, but then I, I hope we go and perform to the best that we can and, um, and have a really good evening. So... You know, I think that uh, we'll, be, we'll be focused on that and focused on ourselves and, uh, uh, and like I say, looking forward to a really challenging game. Well, oh, sorry. No problem. Hi, Hi. Um, just Hi. the, uh, you talked about last year's Cup run or Manchester United. Is there anything you can take from those games with experience of the, that the players had from that run? Um, I, I just think that the, the players will take things from that from that game and their experiences because they're the ones that have played in the game and experienced it. So you know, I think that the ones that have played in that that, that play uh, in any game really, not just tomorrow night. You know, I think each game is is different. There's no doubt. Last season's last season. This season's mm-hmm. different. Um, but I think as an individual, as a player, you take things. And that's part of your experience. That's what we say about experienced players. And, yeah. Um, they're experienced because they've been through things and seen things and done things that uh, that stand them in good stead in the in the future. So, yeah. you know, hopefully that's the case. But this is a this is a different challenge than the ones we faced. Yeah. Previously. I mean, is there an element of trying to? It's not. It's already a cliche, but to make up for that man United game, which was you you were robbed really. But I mean, the player must have been. Absolutely deflated by that, and is there an element of you know, trying to show that they can uh, look? Come you'd, back have, from that? you'd have to ask the players that, but again, this is last year that, that you're talking about something that's gone before. Yeah, um, whatever they do, they'll be trying to they'll be trying to compete with players that are uh, that are outstanding, they're outstanding players, they're yeah. really good individuals, technically and, and tactically, but also they've got a way of playing that. That put you under real pressure when you're in possession of the football because they try and win the ball back as high up the field as they possibly can do. They've got players that can really hurt you, so yeah, yeah. it's not to fear. You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing how we can com- compete and, and work within that uh, within that environment. After seeing what Poster Cumbly said on, on after the Arsenal game, he seems determined to win trophies this year. I mean, 
did you see that and think, well, you know, this is a side that are making the league of a priority this year? Well, that, that's for them. You know, that's yeah. for them. For, for me, we're looking at us and, you know, what we can do, make ourselves a priority for for us. That's all we can do. Yeah. You know, we're coming up against a, a Premier League side that have got aspirations to win trophies, that have spent an awful lot of money in, on a stadium mm-hmm. that's absolutely magnificent. Mm-hmm. They're coming to our stadium for the first time. They've got players throughout <coughs> the squad... Never mind the first 11, they've probably got about 35, 40 players that are, that are outstanding footballers and um, are coached and trained in a way that, you know, they want them to be on the front foot, aggressive and, you know, and they are. And you yeah. come up against a team like Arsenal on, on Saturday and Arsenal are a, a fantastic team. Mm. Brilliant movement, rotations, everything, Tottenham's rotations are... Uh, are, are abs- absolutely outstanding as well. The players that they've got, you know, the decision making on the ball, the speed that they work at, mm. um, it's 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 just brilliant to watch. Mm. You know, I think they're really aggressive. They hold a they held a really really high line for the first time we saw that last season, uh, and people were sort of, you know, open eyed and in amazement at, at, at that and what they were doing then, but. You know, if you can do that, condense the pitch in the front, the front area, the front part of the pitch. Then, if teams want to play out, they're going to have to be really, really good to do that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm just looking forward to the game for for a number of reasons. Yeah. You know, there's this for us is one hundred percent a free hit. Yeah. One hundred percent, and we've got to go and do what we can do to. Uh, yeah. Um, to try and upset the, uh, the equilibrium. Uh, just quickly, Mark, in the history of the club. This has always been a, a fixture since 1987 that's sort of brought up some happy memories of the, of the club. Do you get that feeling around the club as well from the, from the ex-cup uh, winners? Um, I think, well, certainly there's, uh, the, there'll be a, a huge interest in that and uh, I already I know that there's, there's certainly a couple of members of the 87 team that will be in the game, but yeah. um, th- there's always interest around uh, Coventry Tottenham. Yeah. For the for the reasons you've just explained and outlined, and and from the supporters, uh, as well, and and if there are twenty five thousand there tomorrow, then with it being on the TV, that's incredible. Yeah. 